Hello and welcome to today's Tech Tuesday webcast, Next Gen Network Segmentation, brought to you by Datalink, a division of Insight. I'm Amanda Sharp, Marketing Specialist at Datalink, and will be your moderator today. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. This webcast is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. The webcast console you're looking at can be completely customized. You can resize or move any of the windows that you have open. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. All questions from this webcast will be captured. If you are experiencing any tech technical difficulties, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the question mark below the presentation window. The help guide covers common technical issues. I would now like to turn this presentation over to our presenter, Mike Cicero. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Tech, tech Tuesday. I'm Mike Cicero. Uh, I'm a practice architect uh, for network and security. So my responsibility at Insight is ensuring that Insight delivers design and deploy solutions that meet uh, our industry's best practices. And my technical focus is in secure access control, networking, and wireless. So today I'm here to talk to you about network transformation with net, next gen network segmentation. Uh, so just to say there, there is a Q&A open um, and we have somebody monitoring the Q&A. Uh, so we'll answer any of those questions that get asked at the end of, se uh, of the session. So feel free to, uh, as your questions come up, type them in the chat and we'll record them and, and address them at the very end. Okay, so why do our networks need to be transformed? Well, the enterprise network today extends around the globe. So wherever employees are, to wherever the data flows, these employees require access to enterprise resources in more ways than ever before, whether it's inside or outside the office, and regardless of what type of device they're connecting to. This shifts greater flexibility for the employees and is focused on enterprises to face a rapidly changing environment that features a more dynamic landscape than ever before. So let's think about it. With the innovations of mobility, cloud services, internet over everything, it's fundamentally changing the way we live and work as we speak. Uh, the results are that enterprises are challenged to support this massive increase of network-enabled devices and to secure those devices so they don't threat the networks that we support. So across the modern landscape, uh, it's going to be forecasted that there's going to be 500 billion devices connected worldwide by 2030. And that 67% of those employees that are currently using devices at work are BYOD devices that may lack the enterprise security that we've worked on so hard for enterprise devices. So what does that mean for our network? Well, it means that it's harder than ever to see what and who is doing what on our network. And we can't protect what we can't see. So as more and more employees bring their personal devices onto the corporate network, organizations start to lose sight of exactly who and what is on their network. A recent, a recent report said that 90% of surveyed organizations were not fully aware of the devices across their network, um, and that these blind spots can actually quickly translate to security threats. So basically, if you can't see what's accessing your network, it's even going to be a bigger challenge to secure it across all devices and protect against threats. So in our experience, it's not an experience of if your company will face a security threat. Uh, it's when they will face a security threat. Uh, so as we talked about our mobile devices, the problem the enterprises are facing is an increased mobile and IoT environment that we don't have visibility into, that we can't see, so that we can't protect again. 44% of security operation managers see more than 5,000 security alerts a day. That's an insane number that at the end just becomes white noise in the background that we can't monitor. So 
right now we're in the forefront of businesses demanding an unprecedented pace of technological change. Now that cloud services are being used by both approved and non-approved corporate assets, the external adaptation of cloud uh, services will increase from 22 to 31% in just the next 24 months. Modern networks, as we've discussed, are seeing a rapid growth of BYOD devices. 75% of deployees will be on their personal devices doing enterprise work by the year 2020. And the IoT explosion will see 20 billion devices by 2020, 500 billion devices by 2030. Um, so IoT devices or internet over everything devices, things like smart thermostats, smart boards, lighting systems, coffee maker, industrial and manufacturing devices, in today's age and into the future are all going to need access to the network and access to the internet. While we see these devices are making our businesses more automated and productive, they're often not built with security in mind in many cases, and that can make a challenge for our enterprise network. So one stat that I read somewhere that is really interesting is today it's estimated that for every 200 network devices on the network, companies are hiring one IT administrator. By 2030, with the rapid growth of IoT, we're going to have to have one network admin for every one million network devices. So if we think about that in today's model, how is that going to scale for their workload? And quite frankly, it isn't. So our, our future networks need to be agile, secure, and flexible to keep up with the predicted growth in the near future. The one thing here at Insight that we're passionate about is using the network as a security platform. Networks of the future will no longer be equivalent to the plumbing inside a building, but the system needs to provide visibility, context, and security to all the devices that are connected. So when we're talking about network security, visibility and context is everything. The frame on the left, you can see a network or a traditional network that has poor context awareness. So we, so we see an endpoint on the network, and we're really only going to know about the IP of that endpoint, maybe the MAC address if we dig in a little further. If we want to know the user, the type of device that's connected to, what applications that device is using or accessing, additional resources will be needed to determine and investigate that information. So if we do want to apply an actual day one security policy, the only reasonable uh, policy with a poor context awareness we can apply is IP-based. So when we're talking about our next-gen model of networks where we have rich context awareness, so as soon as a device connects to the network, we will already know the employee, what type of workstation it is or what type of endpoint it is the exact location of that device, the time and the date of that device's connectivity, uh, what type of connection, whether it's wired, wireless, or VPN, um, and then be able to scan that device prior to allowing access for threats and vulnerabilities. So with all this rich context information, we can apply very micro security policies based on any one of these conditions that is presented in front of us. So this allows us to create detailed, dynamic, scalable security policies that will eventually lead to role-based access controls on whatever method that the end user or the end device is connecting to the network. And when we talk about role-based access control, this is the mechanism that allows us to apply the land-based segmentation and manage from a single management console that will drive our security enforcement efficiencies and our access control across the network. So what are the benefits of using the network as a security platform? Well, what we talked about, enhanced visibility and context of all network endpoints. We can stop potential risks at the source. So the, the security policies that we applied will be applied to the access later. And so we can stop that risk, quarantine that risk, 
so it won't propagate to the network or have to wait for it to hit an enforcement mode with like traditional security methods. We reduce enforcement point bottlenecks. So we may be able to reduce being able to flow traffic through an aggregation firewall or an aggregation access control list so we can actually enhance security policy since the security policy is applied and the context is applied right at the enforcement point or the access point of the network. We can dynamically assign access control policies. So security policy can follow our endpoint from wherever it may connect to the network, whether that endpoint connects in the morning on wired, in the afternoon in the, uh, on wireless, and then in the evening through VPN. That security policy can be that follow that endpoint no matter where it connects and can always be applied in one single management console. And then the, lastly, it increases the speed of efficiency of incident responses. So single pane of management, we can dynamically quarantine threats until further investigation or remediation is done. We can automatically track the incidents to specific devices based on all the contextual information the network is now providing us about that endpoint to do audits on a specific security incident that does occur. Because remember, as we talked about, it's not if there's going to be a threat, it's when there's going to be a threat. So incident response that takes up a lot of manual resources and times. And if you have so much information using your network about all these endpoints or all devices, any response to those incidents, audits of those incidents, determining what that incident is, is going to be a lot quicker because you'll already have so much information about every endpoint that's connected to your network. So what does next-gen access control look like? So our next-gen access control model is essentially a centralized security solution that automates context-aware access controls to network resources and can also share that visibility and contextual data with other components about the network. So this is a centrally managed solution based on the contextual information we gathered. So the contextual information is going to be the threat, the vulnerability, the who, the what, the where, the when, the how, and if that device is compliant. So Cisco Identity Services Engine, or Cisco ICE, is one of those next generation access control solutions. So Cisco ICE is a centralized security solution that automates context-aware access to the control and assigns role-based access. And here's how it works. In reality, you have many types of users trying to get onto the network. So in one use case, it's not an employee who's trying to gain access to the network, but it's also not a guest. Many organizations have an intermediate types of access that they need to assign. Say a contractor who's coming in and needs access temporarily to certain network resources to either get their job efficiently to help out the business or the organization. So using ICE in this use case, we can collect the contextual data about the contractor's device. With that contextual identity, ICE can establish putting pieces into a single location to so our management console and make intelligent policy decisions about that device or any other device that's connecting to the network. So here our contractor may get access to a certain file server within the organization and hit the internet, but does not access any other servers that it does not need access to. Other examples that we typically use ICE for are to restrict access on employees, different levels of employees, difference between admin employees and employees in the HR department or employees in the engineering department. Um, or if you're a visitor, just giving them straight guest access when they come into your network without giving them access to the corporate environment. And this can be all done dynamically, single plan and management. Um, and then lastly, right, taking those devices and scanning those devices to determine if they're compliant or if they're a threat to the network so we can restrict them, quarantine those devices before any threat would propagate to any other segments of the network. 
So what this all means is with deeper visibility and context, we get a more accurate identification, which ensures that users and devices that are on board seamlessly with greater and more granular security is protected. So our role-based access control use cases, and one of the great things about this solution is the flexibility where we can assign, we can do all the solutions, we can individually do solutions. Um, they don't all have to be together or not at all. So a lot of in industries or organizations will be very care about asset visibility or access control and device administration. Um, other industries really care about BYOD access, um, using all that information to apply a different layer of security, such as segmentation or rapid threat defense or threat control. Uh, these are all the typical use cases that you'll see in our segmented and next-gen network environments. So the other big thing about the whole next generation solution or next generation networks is the behavioral analytics of all devices connecting to the network. So that's being able to understand what all those devices are connected to, what they're reaching out to, what's reaching out to them. So we can understand if that behavior is normal behavior for that device or if that behavior is abnormal and that device may be compromised. So as, as we talked about Cisco ICE or any other access control environment, it's a very important part of network as a sensor model. And a, another big component of that is our network behavioral tools, as we just discussed, what those devices are communicating to, what's communicating to those devices. Stealth Watch, Cisco Stealth Watch is another tool that can work along a product as ICE to enhance our traffic visibility and increase our threat detection. Um, our incident response diagnosis and user monitoring is also something that network behavioral analysis tools can use. So overall, with access control tools and network behavioral analysis tools, this will give, or give us deeper visibility into the network so we can accelerate um, our incident response or increase our macro dynamic security policies. So with the additional visibility that network behavioral analysis tools include, ICE can add another layer of access control. So let's talk about our access control approaches. So we have some traditional methods of how we've done access control in the past and how many enterprises have done access control in the past. And this is through access control lists, um, or VLAN assignments. Now, these, these policies have worked great in our environments in the past, but they are not fully scalable or full-fledged solutions that will work in our next generation model. So access control list, right, when we talk about access control list, whether it's on a, on a router or a switch through a firewall, generally they're IP-based. So, it reduces our scalability for applications that may be dynamic, for mobile endpoints that may be moving from one segment of the network to another segment of the network. Um, in large environments, what we see is access control lists become huge and unmanageable. They chew up memory resources on platforms. So that limits the scalability or how granular we can create our access control policies using ACLs. And Additionally, some of the issues that we've seen with scalability of VLAN is VLANs we need to propagate throughout the enterprise to have a consistent user experience. So that can be challenging not only to understand our needs of right now, but if we don't have a good VLAN design that works for our future needs that are unknown, it's hard to go back and make those VLAN adjustments without going through a whole re-IP design, a re-access uh, control on the network, applying configs to every segment of our network to match whatever future needs that we can't predict today. 
Um, and then dynamic VLAN, so where we actually are pushing down policy, so switching the VLANs of the port um, that the uh, endpoint is connecting to, so policy-based VLAN switching, we also see as problematic because that endpoint, a lot of times, especially on wired networks, prefers not to release their IP address once assigned. So this is really challenging in environments where we have endpoints that don't want to get a new IP address. We can't give them a new VLAN, or if we do give them a new VLAN, they're going to lose access. And it also really only works well in DHCP environments. So environments that have static IP addresses, such as in data centers, or DHCP reserved environments, dynamic VLAN switching is challenging to roll out on a global scale. So let, let's talk about what we view as next generation access control, and that's secure group tags using Cisco TrustDeck. Uh, so SGTs, so secure group tags, and you'll also hear them called scalable group tags, are a component of Cisco TrustDeck. So what it is is a 16-bit tag that's put into each frame that's associated with the device as it connects to the network. Secure group tagging, scalable group tagging, allow segmentation without the need for VLANs. And even and more importantly, it simplifies the operational management of firewall policies and access lists because these policies no longer have to be based on source and destination IPs. They can be based on the source and destination of the tag that, they're try that the endpoint or application is trying to communicate to. Um, so once we have scalable group tags or security group tags assigned to endpoints as they enter the network, we can start creating our role-based access control policies based on the tag that's assigned to each device. And no longer does our role-based access control need to be assigned onto the VLAN or the IP address that, or the location that device gets. So overall, security group tags, Cisco trust that is going to simplify our administration, manages policy within plain language. So we can say tag 10 can communicate to tag 20, but tag 10 should never be able to communicate to endpoints that have a tag of 30 or applications that have a tag of 30. So it's a very management-centric policy from a single management policy that we can actually push down to all our access control devices on the network. And it scales intensively since it is a centralized management. If we need to make a policy change, we do that in the central management console. And it will be pushed out to all our network access and all our enforcement points that we've set out to the network. No longer if we make a change to an ACL, do we have to go push that to all the uh, aggregation layer devices on the network or all the firewall devices on the network. With a central management plane that secure group policy allows us, we make the change one place. The security policy is propagated throughout the network. So we've already started discussing how this is going to simplify our segmentation. So let's just look at our traditional segmentation model that maybe your enterprise is running and definitely models that we've deployed uh, at many enterprises in the past. is It's a VLAN-based traditional segmentation where we create specific group VLANs for the type or function of the device that is connecting to the network. And all that traffic is funneled into an aggregation layer where we have some kind of enforcement point onto the network. So, you know, two issues with this model that make it scalable and hard to apply micro segmentation policy to is one is spanning VLANs across the enterprise um, is not easy. If we need to add additional VLANs for future use cases, it's not easy to make adjustments to the VLAN structure that we've currently implemented. And then our enforcement points are essentially bottlenecks within the network where we have to do our enforcement through an aggregation firewall or aggregation ACLs. Um, and our enforcement is up the chain. It's not 
port at the source. So looking at our next gen segregation model with Cisco TrustSec, really it simplifies our micro and macro segmentation policy. As we've talked about, it's centralizing our policy provision through ICE. We don't have to make topology changes if we have a new use case added. We add that into our centralized management plane and that's propagated to our access layer. Our access layer can now become the enforcement point so we actually can mitigate risks at the point of entry instead of having them to pop populate up through the aggregation layer. Um, and, and I just want to note that we still think VLANs are great. VLANs still have their place on tomorrow's network because they're going to be there to do their traditional breaking up broadcast domains. But you don't have to have a micro VLAN structure like you see on the model on the left. So how is trust second segmentation going to work? Well, the use of trust sec's dynamic role-based access enables organizations to enforce business role policies across the network and services and decisions. So administration, administrators, as we've discussed, can use the contextual information to create groups and assign access rights based on the role, function, location, threat, tech, vulnerability. This process gives us the right level of access to the right people at the right time and allows access to critical applications or critical endpoints that can be easily controlled through the centralized management. So let's just look how this works throughout our policy environment. So as endpoints connect to the network, they are placed in their specific security group based on their authentication results. So based on the results of who, what, where, when, and how they are connected to the network. And that's all the contextual information the network is providing to us and sending up to ICE for the authentication results and assigning of group tags. So the SGT matrix or the secure group tag matrix inside of ICE is the one that's actually assigning our role-based mapping. So it is mapping the communication of all our different security groups from our source and destination of the security groups of what's allowed to communicate with what and what's denied to communicate with what. And it takes this actual policy and sends it down to all our access switches, wireless LAN controller, APs, VPN gateways to apply security to all the endpoints that are connecting to the network. So one of the things that Cisco TrustSec is really good at is securing the east-west traffic on the network LAN. But it also can be integrated with application-based security control to restrict the north and south communication from endpoints to cloud and data center applications. So we can not only segment endpoints from each other, but we can define which endpoints, which users, can communicate to trusted out and apps and services, whether that's in the data center or whether in the enterprise cloud. So let's just walk through a few typical examples. So in our example that I have up here, we're in a hospital. And we have three different types of users. We have a doctor who needs access to everywhere on the network. We have a lab technician who is here doing her work, but she should really only need access to Wi-Fi and Internet because she may be on her own device. And she should not have access to sensitive hospital applications or other sensitive hospital endpoints that may be connected to the same network. And then we have a pharma representative who's there but just needs wireless access to do their role. So using our single pane of control points, we can assign user access 
based on who that user is, what type of device they're connected to, um, and give them the right level of access at the right time. And the other challenge we've seen in to, uh, today's networks and going into the future is guest is a very vague term. We, we have different level of guest users who come into the network that we may need to give different levels of access to. And traditionally, guest environments was you get internet access or you get corporate access. There was no in between. So we can improve our guest experience using Cisco Trust Stack using Cisco ICE, using our next-gen network visibility to actually control different levels of guests. So we can create a guest level access who just wants to connect and get internet access uh, via their iPad. We can take a guest and give them a little better internet access, a little, a little more um, bandwidth, if they want to register themselves or identify who they are. And if they're a contractor who comes in and maybe they need access to a printer or to a file server, you can have an employee sponsor give them that level of access through that single pane of management. And no longer do we need our network admins to be the administrators of that policy where that sponsor guest user is connecting. And one of the great things about introducing network security is the layers that we can apply security or security a la carte. Some environments need to be more secure than other environments. So we can use the overall solution to add different layers to not only do phased approaches, but just put the security controls necessarily to meet those business requirements and those network requirements. So we can employ a solution where we're just concerned about the network visibility and the analytics of the endpoints and applications that are connecting to the network. Or we can put a, on top of that, with that information, we can add a layer of user and endpoint authentication that users have to set, successfully authenticate to the network before it allowed access. And then we can get granular based on all the information from tasks one and two on role-based access control of endpoints and guests. And, and introducing Trish, uh, Cisco TrustSec, we can segment all those users and devices using security group tags or scalable group tags. And then integrating that single pane solution with our data center enforcement points and assigning tags to our data center and cloud-based apps, we can have end-to-end -end segmentation from end user endpoint to applications inside the data center. So why should we embrace all of this network as a security stack? Well, because it's there and we're gonna need it and it's expanding and more devices are connecting to the network. And we don't have to use this as just a method of directing traffic or giving devices IP addresses. We can use the network as a place to capture contextual information and visibility. Uh, the network can also be a place where we apply security policy. Security of policy does not need to be applied just at firewalls or just at edge points into the network. We can apply it all the way down at the access layer. We can stream, stream behavioral analytics of network devices that are connected to our network and base policies on typical use cases to understand how our devices are connecting. And if a device is connecting normally, then we can flag that. We can flag that to an administrator or we can flag that in a sense where we can dynamically quarantine that device so it can be further investigated. And we can do rapid threat detection around these devices. We can determine if devices are compliant with the network or if there's a vulnerability based on using all the sensors that we gather from the network.
So one of the things I want to point out is, is where our network is going is to our uh, software-defined network and our software-defined architecture. Uh, software-defined network access um, is, in the future, going to provide us consistent policy-based automation from edge to cloud on the network. Well, we, when we get to the place where we can automate networks, that's great. But this TrustSec and security policies, the great thing about that is we can build those policies today. We don't have to have all the infrastructure in place that we need to do a whole software-defined architecture. And once we get to that point where we're doing software and network automation, we can we already have our security policies for our endpoints applications in place that will overlay on top of it. So it's very important to the end-to-end -end solution and also the roadmap solution that we do see coming uh, that's going to be the network infrastructure of the future. So if you're not familiar with the direction of software-defined access of where it's going, right, we, we want to use software-defined access to automate user access control policies, the right policies for the user devices where applications cross the network, using single network fabric to insist a con consistent user experience anywhere without compromising on security, and security care and segmentation, which is the realm that we live in, actually keeping user devices separated without going in and redesigning the network. So overall, we, what we wanted to get to is that, you know, this solution can be available today. This is something that we're actually implementing on our customers, and we're, we're seeing a lot of success. And it's also going to be scalable for some of the future things that are coming in through the software-defined networks um, that we should be coming on the roadmap in the next couple of years. So one of, the, one of the important things that we see is start using your network as a sensor. Use your network to do visibility control of your endpoints uh, with the information that we can gather today. So we can start understanding the network devices that are connecting, the network devices that are going to connect, and micro-segmenting those devices or micro-building security policies for those devices that will secure those endpoints not only now but going into the future. So I want to thank you for everyone attending, uh, taking time out of your busy days. Uh, that's all that I had to present, but I wanted to make sure that we left time for Q&A. So if you could uh, please... Let me know if there's any questions on the line. I'd be happy to answer them. Hey, Mike, no questions have come in. Great. That means uh, everyone understands that everything we're talking about. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for attending today's webcast. An on-demand version of this webcast will be available within two to three days of the webcast. You will receive an email notification once the recording is available. Thank you again for participating in today's webcast.